Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-123 or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis. I'm here with Kurt Dukaj, Perry Hightube, William Beach Baker, and Lawrence on our board. We also have an in-studio guest, Ron V. He's a local patient here in town, and he's been a patient here for as long as we've had cards. Uh, and he's also a grower. And we'd l- kind of like to talk to him about his growing situation, and then we're going to talk about um, his lighting. His lighting. So, Ron, welcome to the show. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Okay. You've been growing with these chameleon lights, these plasma lights, for how long? I've only had them for about two months. I'm kind of doing a little bit of research on it uh, as far as what to expect out of that. And uh, really, I'm, I'm excited to talk about this. Uh, the spectrum of that, uh, of that light is really, really good. If you, if you know anything about lighting, what we really want to achieve is a full balance. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a vitamin pill. Yeah. And uh, really, when you're looking at uh, buying a uh, vitamin from a 99 cent store, it would be different from going to your pharmacy and getting something that the doctor would prescribe. And that's what you're getting with this plasma light. You're getting such a good spectrum that uh, really it's can be equivalent to uh, giving your plant new vitamins. Right on. Okay, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. We're going to go into local news and then we have uh, then we have a guest uh, on the radio to talk about these chameleon grow systems. So in the local news, we have more shenanigans out of Clark County, City of Las Vegas, State. We, we all kind of knew that this was happening. Um, before any of this started, I was told by one of my friends, he's a really high-powered lobbyist here in town, that the people that will get these licenses are the friends of the commissioners the friends of the city council members the friends of the local politicians and it really didn't matter what the state did and and me being naive and kind of pollyannish i was like i was like well wait a minute the state made this law so that it would be a fair and equitable process so they take all of the identifiers off of these binders and how it's going to be ranked is by this merit system and the merit system is what the legislative body intended that the selections would be but we now look at the selections that the state has um has said that these are the highest merited um, dispensaries, you know, that that we have judged based upon taking all these names off of here, and they're not ju- they're not jiving with the city council and the county commission. Well, this is definitely becoming this is definitely becoming more of an issue as time goes on. Uh, and like you said, we thought there were a lot of people who saw it coming, but unfortunately. <clears throat> I feel like denial is the most dangerous drug in the world that a lot of people are kind of taking right now. And we've all kind of been putting our heads in the sand and just hoping it would work out for the best. And uh, unfortunately, it's just not working out that way. And like you said, there's a push and pull and it seems like everyone's kind of digging their heels in and nobody wants to. uh, Nobody's blinking right now, to put it mildly. Well, you know, the thing is, is that recently... um, Clark County asked um, asked the head uh, the head of the Division of Behavioral Health to give them a call and to chime in on what's going on and the state declined to call Clark County commissioners and the Clark County commissioners are a bit upset. Well, of course, everyone's upset. This goes way back to when they decided to do their licensing before the state issued their licenses when the county decided to jump the gun there was barking from carson city as soon as that happened they're like look you know what are you doing you're you're trying to step on our toes here you're trying to take our money yeah and now here we are we're in this situation um you know there are people who got licensed in the county who didn't get licensed by the state and vice versa i would imagine it's the same in most of the other municipalities uh i would 
you know, I would call on the governor to have a special legislative session to solve this and just get get them up to Carson City, have the assembly and Senate vote on a, on a bill that would allow more dispensaries so that these licensees can get this going and we can get this revenue coming in. Because I really feel like we're going to be in a lot of trouble if we don't kind of fulfill our promise as an industry to the state. We told them that by next legislative session, there would be money coming in from these dispensaries, that we would have a model to look at and follow, and we would be able to kind of look forward to the 2015 legislative session to address some of these bill issues and things like that. And now we're not going to have any, anyone, no employee, you know, we're going to have no one employed. We're going to have no revenue coming in. And it's just going to give a, bl a big black eye to what we're trying to do. Well, and, and the thing is, is that it, this is not just going to affect the dispensaries. The dispensaries are the ones that are fighting, not the cultivation and production people. But do you think that uh, Clark County is going to issue business licenses for people to cultivate these hundreds and thousands of pounds of mar or marijuana before the dispensary issue gets solved? Well, I, I think not. Yeah, I don't know how they could justify issuing uh, licenses to grow tens of thousands of pounds of cannabis with no potential market for it. I mean, I know that cannabis stays good for a period of time, but how long will it really stay good for? Isn't there something written into the bill about expiration dates of the medicine and things of that nature? I'm not sure whether there is or there isn't. I think that after it gets approved at the laboratory level, then it that uh, that I'm not really sure. That's a really great question. Just, but you know, I've odd. heard I've heard some you know um, Egyptian tombs that were opened up and they had cannabis in them that was still good. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, that's a long cure time. No doubt, <laughs> it's better with age. <laughs> but well, you know, I, I'm just hoping that you know there can be some kind of compromised reach sooner rather than later because this looks like it's just going to get worse before it's going to get better right now and if this stymies up at the state level then we could be waiting another year to a year and a half we gotta have a special open. session we gotta we gotta uh, do a session early or something like that we gotta do something and and you think sandoval is gonna d just approve it he's not gonna be sitting again as governor so i mean well, he's got he's, his eyes on a higher prize well no doubt i mean i think that would potentially give him the flexibility to make a move like that because there is minimal risk because if he see chooses to seek a federal office he's fulfilled the will of the people the people want these dispensaries open and it's not the problem of people don't want them open it's that there's not enough room for everyone that wants in so if we can make room i would imagine the business owners would be happy the state representatives and the county representatives would eventually be happy now i understand that everyone's fighting right now but you know i think we can make Look lemonade we can make lemonade out of these lemons for sure well and and another good thing about opening more dispensaries is that it would drive the price down for the people there, it wouldn't be as high priced. No, I don't think it would be a bad thing. And they were already talking about increasing the number of dispensaries this session anyway. So let's just jump on it and get it going. All right. That's the official word from Perry Haichu, man. <laughs> Gov, you need yeah. to freaking hold a special legislative session. All right. You know what? I really love being ahead of the curve. Remember last week when we were talking about Truesdale and, uh, and the Clark and the City of Las Vegas Planning Commission? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> Truesdale um, did not, you know, did not abstain on voting for some of these dispensaries. As a matter of fact, he he um, voted against so many dispensaries, but he abstained from the ones that he had involvement with when he should have just taken his name off of all of them completely. At least he was smart enough to abstain from the vote, for sure. He, he only abstained from the ones that he was yeah, involved the, with, but he voted he against so many other ones. So you think that he should have abstained from... All of it. From all the voting and just removed himself from that yeah, process, that's considering yeah, he that's had what Carolyn Goodman skin did. in the game? Carolyn Goodman, Carolyn Goodman, she just took herself out of out of the whole issue, and so that so that she wouldn't get you know besmirch her name. <laughs> um, but Truesdale basically he killed so many other applications and and so many other um, dispensary licenses that he, that he he basically was you know like we're talking about crooked, it's crooked. But we were ahead of the story, and it came out in the Las Vegas Review Journal. James uh, Devahan of Las Vegas Review Journal wrote a, a, you know, wrote a story about this, you know, after we reported it. So, hey, like to have no, our finger on the pulse of Las Vegas and Nevada. No doubt, it's good to be, you know, ahead of that, ahead of that news curve, and it's definitely good to be uh, revealing the. Uh, in, I don't want to say injustices, but just the truth of what's going on out there. And, you know, unfortunately, the, the examples like this just speak to the overall lack of trust between people and their local governments, both federal and 
and local. So, you know, we got to call them out and do what we can to fix the process. I mean, yeah, like we always say, what can we do to be uh, better stewards of our communities? Got to do it one person at a time. Well, there are a lot, there are a few different shops that have uh, some grievances, and there are some lawsuits possible. Like Greenleaf Consultants, uh, uh, Michael Pratter said the company still might take legal action over its Las Vegas application, uh, growing uh, joining a growing chorus of unsuccessful delivery applicants, including uh, New Life CLV, New Leaf, lo- New Leaf CLV, which is uh, a hopeful run by longtime California-based dispensary owners at the Berkeley Patients Group. Uh, this was ranked as one of the city's third best applicants by the state, yet the group was denied a permit on a four to two vote last month because of a U-turn. Yep. I was there. That's they right. said not because of a U-turn. Well, yeah, I know Christ it's not because of a well, U-turn. That's, that's, but that's the, the reasoning reason. they gave. They can yeah. fix. <laughs> look, they can fix the street. You know, you can't fix who you know, and they just didn't really. Yeah. I don't want to put it that way. But, they didn't you know, know the right people. Well, they huh? didn't. You know, yeah. I don't. I don't know what happened. They. Well, they made a wrong move along the way somewhere well their attorney john sandal said the company is looking at all options and appealing. oh i imagine they would be i imagine a lot of teams are now the question is is it going to be a class action lawsuit all these people going to come together or are there going to be individual attorneys that i think this is this is what i heard that it's going to be it's going to be many dispensary or would be dispensary owners because they don't want to be the lone dog going after you know going after uh, the state going after the city. What a mess. Yeah, there's, there's, what, a, what a there's, mess. there's a lot of big names and a lot of big powered lawyers behind them. So I would expect some lawsuits, maybe class action coming down. The uh, I was talking to a really high powered lobbyist last Wednesday at uh, that Springs Preserve get together. Mm-hmm. And he was and he was just he gave me hints that he would be tossing his, you know, having a having a dog in the fight, so to speak, because a lot of his clients got denied for dispensaries but then got high ranks up at the state so So. you heard it here first folks people you know people are going to be suing the state and it's going to be a little mess but i hope that i hope that we will make lemonade out of these lemons for sure well another thing you heard first from us is we were talking about how they were going to be coming down on all these illegal services and how we mentioned that they're going to come after the grows first out of local news in pahrump uh, Oh my yeah. goodness. Marijuana busts $34 million worth of plants, Nye County Sheriff says. So the Nye County Sheriff deputies confiscated 8,500 to 9,000 marijuana plants in northeast Nye County worth about $34 million. Oh my God. Now, it's not just the plants that they confiscated. The deputies cut and confiscated 8,000 to 5,000, 8,500 to 9,000 plants. And they also airlifted out about 30 bundles of dried plants, each weighing 60 to 100 pounds each. What? Yeah. So if you do the math and you figure about a thousand, uh, about a about a pound per plant, which is what they they average, that means they they pulled almost oh, yeah, outdoor, they pulled okay. almost three thousand nine hundred pounds out of that grow. Wow. Well, that must have been over over quite an quite a big area. I mean, how many plants can you stuff into an acre? Well, the, it, it was like two point three to three miles up a slot canyon. Okay. Yeah, it was, it up was a canyon, a... and it was up near you know up near what mountain? Uh, it doesn't doesn't say it was located two and a half miles up a canyon. So. Well, Nye County is one of the biggest geographical counties in the country. That's that's pretty vague, but no, okay. I think that they. I mean, they listed a mountain, a mountain, and um, saying it's two point three miles up the slot canyon, and I was just like, oh my goodness, mm-hmm. yeah, that's they, a nice little hike. They uh, they spotted it with the uh, the grow operation with uh, aircraft, and they said a late summer tip led them there. When they got there, investigators found irrigation lines and huts for drying and processing, and there was also a kitchen area equipped with a Coleman stove, propane bottles, and food, according to the sheriff's office. And no no people? No people, and no, no one's been arrested made. yet. Man, just like that, just like that big grow that was up on North Trail Loop. Do you remember that up about on, what two years ago? Yeah. Up on Mount Charleston. There was a bunch of Blue Dream up on Mount Charleston. About uh, uh, where was it? About. North Trail Loop, about a mile off the trail. They never found anybody for that either, you know? Yeah, I wonder if these people are getting tip-offs or do they just see the planes and go bug out? Uh, maybe a little bit of both. Definitely disgruntled employees and whatnot. Well, I got, I got another local story here. Right on. Um, there's a Nevada senator who is trying to call the marijuana issue. The Democrats' question three in 2016, our friend, Senator 
Dick Sigerbloom, Democratic state senator here in Las Vegas, wants to kind of rally the troops after uh, after what happened this election cycle. Uh, you know, very disappointed with the turnout and all that. And he really thinks that's the uh, the the ballot questions were kind of a a catalyst for turning some of the Republicans out. Like uh, oh, good. like the uh, what was that? The margins tax. Yeah. He really really felt like that had a big you know uh, a big uh, you know. Impact? impact thank you sorry about that brain fart a big impact and all the republicans coming out to vote and he really thinks that this issue could be a catalyst for the democrats to come out also not just the marijuana issue but also the uh gun registration issue the background check issue and there's a couple of things that he really thinks that could be uh you know something to kind of not only turn the tide of the political spectrum but kind of force the will of the people at the same time so you know we'll see we'll see how that goes yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully the de Democrats will get out to vote, and in spite of having a, 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 you know, a heavy GOP legislature. All right, all right. Well, um, we have got our. Uh, we're going to take a break, then we're going to come back and have our four twenty moment, and we'll talk to you in a few moments. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at We Can 702. <laughs> <coughs> Welcome back. Uh, that sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. And today we're going to honor Craig Rogers from Cannabis Science, a good friend of ours uh, who today would have been his birthday, but he recently lost his battle with cancer. So uh, good old 51. Yeah, yeah, 51s. I, I didn't know what that mean. He had a tattoo on him, and uh, it, it, and I thought it had to do with something with our uh, our Vegas team, the 51s here. And I asked him about it, and he said, no, I'm the 51st person that has been uh, diagnosed with this really rare brain cancer. And then he showed me the uh, scar on his head, and we talked, um, you know, for quite a while about that. I, I first met Craig about, what, about four years ago? About four years ago, and when I was sitting on the ASA board of Las Vegas, the Americans for Safe Access chapter here, it was the you know the inaugural chapter of ASA. Um, he he just he had a great sense of humor, um, and he was always uh, you know telling me about different things he had done. And he, I know that he had quite a special relationship with several people in the community, including you, Perry, right? Uh, definitely. Craig Rogers was a huge influence on my advocacy. Um, he, like you said, just kind of came in like a... Gangbusters, like a, man. Yeah, he really comes in with a lot of energy. And uh, we hit it off right away. We became fast friends. And he ended up bringing me to Carson City during that uh, that hearing that I met you at. Yeah. At the, uh, what was that, the Senate Judiciary Committee, I believe, for Senate Bill 374. He just called me the night before, and he's just like, we're going to Carson City tomorrow morning, and you're coming with. And I'm just like, uh, okay. So he <laughs> picks me up, and we cruise all the way up there. And before you know it, you know, he's kind of poking me. He's like, you got to get up there and testify. So I did, and then Tick came and approached me after the, uh, after the hearing and, you know, gave me a pep talk, and then... 
after that, I ended up uh, retaining a lobbyist on behalf of the passage of the bill because we were really nervous that it wasn't going to get out of committee at the time and things weren't looking so so Rosie good at the moment. Man. Yeah, and so we got together with Jen and Kurt and a couple other the weekend board and we decided to work together on this and we came up with a series of points that we wanted to get in the bill and we got a lot of work done. And, you know, Craig was really the catalyst behind all that. Like, if he wouldn't have stepped in that day, um, you know, who knows where we all would have been. And it's just kind of like the butterfly effect, you know, you never really know what small uh, words someone could say just as simple as, hey, you know, come on, you're coming with me tomorrow could have such a dramatic impact later on on uh, on this whole industry. And, you know, uh, he, he was just a very special person for sure. And it was a shame to lose him right after the bill passed. But, you know, he always wanted marijuana to be legal. And that was a big a passion of his. And, you know, we can proudly carry that banner and uh, just keep fighting. So for sure. Some of his uh, some of his. Uh um, I guess catchphrases were F cancer, except, yeah. you know, you say it, F cancer and that yeah. he's a bad EMF or yes, he, is. Yeah. Very much yeah. so. he actually bestowed a BMF wallet upon me. You know, he gave them out to very few people. I'm sure Perry got one. He carries his with him. <laughs> yep. So. He has it in his wallet right now. So yeah, you had to do something to impress him quite a bit to get a BMF wallet. <laughs> so this 420 <laughs> moment is a salute to you, Craig A. Rogers, wherever you are. I know you're looking down on us and saying, fight, 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 because F cancer. That's right. Happy birthday, buddy. So. All right. So next we have uh, Chris from Chameleon Lighting. Chris. Hey. Hello, Hi. Welcome you? to the show. Thanks very much. Uh, really excited to be here. Um, you guys, uh, you, you were talking about, uh, you heard it first. You heard it first from We Can. Well, plasma grow lighting, you heard it first from We Can here. Right on, right on. How, have, how, how long have you been working with uh, plasma grow lighting? Well, actually, we started off in 2007. We incorporated back then, and uh, I have a, my very good friend is a horticulture scientist here in uh, Orlando, Florida. Went to his greenhouse, saw a bunch of these um, uh, parking lot lights, high pressure sodium, in his greenhouse, just uh, superheating it. And, and I said, there's got to be a better way. I've been an entertainment show producer for about uh, 35 years or so. And uh, so I'm, I'm no stranger to technology. Okay. Jumped right into um, the LED market and said, you know, perhaps this could do it. So reached out to some contacts in LED. I built the brightest grow light, LED grow light on the planet back in 2008 okay so the cannabis cup and um and a great product unfortunately way too expensive and still not powerful enough so about five years ago i jumped in with plasma grow lighting a friend of mine had recommended that to me and and realized that the spectrum for plasma grow lighting is just superior to any other grow light on the planet and I, there was one of your callers at the beginning of the show that was talking about light nutrition Oh no! Actually, we have him. Uh, we have him in studio. It's a it's a, a man that's been using your your product here in town. Oh, right on. Well, very good. Well, he was he was spot on when he when he equated uh, human nutrition to light nutrition. Everything on this planet requires a certain amount of nutrition. Uh, you're no exception to that rule, and neither are plants. So when we saw the, the full-spectrum light nutrition of plasma brought to the table, we knew we had a huge home run here. So we began developing plasma lighting uh, about five years ago and have been in market since then with nothing but uh, great accolades. Okay. Um, what, so the main difference between plasma grow lighting and traditional uh, high HID grow lighting is basically this is gives you more of a full spectrum that it more equates to the sun than than the traditional lighting. Yeah, that's 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 spot on as well. There are a couple of main differences between plasma grow lighting and traditional HID grow lighting, like metal halide or high pressure sodium, in as much as. The uh, plasma grow lighting does not have a filament. Every, is, the moment you turn on your um, you know, high-pressure sodium light, uh, to give you an example, mm -hmm. that filament begins to pollute the internal atmosphere within that envelope. So the, the atmosphere begins to deteriorate, the spectrum begins to deteriorate, the tungsten begins to spatter on the inside of the envelope, cutting down on the light output. So uh, the light begins to deteriorate immediately, and, and most growers will change out their uh, high-pressure sodiums every year. In the case of uh, plasma lighting, there is no filament. 
the um, so it doesn't diminish over over time. It, it doesn't diminish as rapidly as uh, high pressure sodium or metal halide lighting it. It really maintains its light output and spectral qualities for a much longer period of time. Nice. You know, most people don't know that, you know, your ultraviolet lights and high pressure sodium lights, they're only good for so long. So even though you still see the light coming out of them, it doesn't have the spectrum uh, still intact. Um, yeah, that's, that's exactly right on. Um, you know, to spend $100 a year or how much uh, a high pressure sodium bulb costs, you can get them yeah, they're a lot. really cheap and you can pay a lot more. But uh, to change, change your light bulb about $100 a year after you've just paid for the um, equipment up front really doesn't make a lot of sense. In the case of plasma lighting, where you can run this lamp, the half-life for this lamp is uh, 30,000 hours. And that's how lamps are rated um, at their actual half-life. And that means that either half their spectrum or half their output has uh, diminished. High-pressure sodium lights uh, definitely reach their, their light output much faster than the 20,000 hour rating they have, and that's why people change them out. In the case of plasma grow lighting, that spectrum and that intensity is a 30,000 hour uh, lifespan, or in, actually it's the half-life of it. So it burns on well beyond that. If you, were to, if you were to divide that out 12 hours a day, that'd actually be about seven years before it reached its half-life, and it'll oh, burn thanks. on well beyond that. And, and so I see that you only have, you, the highest wattage that you have is a 500 watt plasma grow light, but how does that compare to the high pressure sodium or the HID uh, traditional grow lighting? Yeah, so uh, another great question. Uh, what we like to do is we like to tell the exact truth and nothing but the truth. So um, uh, 500 watts of plasma grow light is, um, uh, we can outperform a 600 watt high pressure sodium. So if you're used to using 600 watts as opposed to thousands, a lot of people are just horsepower freaks. The plant cannot process that much light, and that'll be a huge um, uh, so you have a lot of heat. There. So you have a lot of heat output off of a 1,000 watt um, as compared to a 600 watt also. That's right. And so uh, in, in comparison to a 600 watt high-pressure sodium, which actually draws 645 watts, we can give you a 22% reduction in electrical cost, a 22% reduction in electrical heat loading, less radiant heat, and full spectrum light nutrition. That's what we call that. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the term PAR. Have you heard that before? Actually, Ron in the studio was just telling me about PAR and that, and that PAR is, 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 hi Ron, and, that, and how did you describe it, Ron, earlier, what PAR was equal to? Well, PAR is basically what produces the photosynthesis in the plant. Okay. And Chris could actually tell you a little bit more about that, but that's really what you're shooting at. When you look at the uh, HPS lighting uh, on that PAR scale, it, it really looks feeble as opposed to uh, a plasma light. Now, when you're Yeah, that's right on, uh, Ron. Um, so plasma grow lighting, is, what's, what's really different about it is, uh, is, the, um, is the color of the light. So just to give you some sort of point of reference, the color rendering index of the sun, it's called CRI, big technical word here. CRI of the sun is 100, can't get any better than that. A high pressure sodium, to give you a point of reference, it has a 24 CRI. If that was your um, uh, test scores in college, uh, your parents would be pissed. Whereas chameleon plasma has a 95 CRI, so we have 95% perfect uh, color rendering index within PAR, and PAR stands for photosynthetically active radiation. It's really the spectrum of light that the plants grab from sunlight, which generates an enormous amount of light spectrum. Plants only see a certain part of that, so they will use uh, just that particular spectrum of light, and we have 95% perfect spectrum of light within that PAR. That's excellent. I was just, when I was talking to uh, Ron earlier about this, um, as I was listening to his, you know, his conversation about this and kind of reading uh, about the chameleon lights, 
Um, I kind of equated it to electromagnetic radiation as x-rays are produced. Um, you have a tungsten filament inside a, a glass envelope that is superheated and these electromagnetic um, or electrons get excited by that. Um, and it sounds like plasma almost it works like the sun. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good point. Plasma does work like the sun in as much as there is a, a radiation in the center of the sun and a glowing gas uh, that uh, surrounds the sun. So the radiation actually um, uh, makes that gas glow into a plasma, and that's what uh, generates the actual light that we see. So does it put off less heat or a, an equal amount of heat or maybe more heat? So electrical heat is a, is a tricky subject, and I'll, I'll, I'll breeze over it quickly because it'll, it'll make your head spin. Electrical heat, a 600-watt high-pressure sodium, actually draws 645 watts. There's some power lost in the ballast, and it takes that much power to just generate a 600 watts. So you lose a lot of power in, in, in that ballast. So the electrical heat portion of this is a 500-watt grow light of any nature or light of any nature generates 500 watts of electrical heat. A 600 watt high pressure sodium generates 645 watts of electrical heat. So there's a 22% reduction in electrical heat and power draw with plasma and a longer lasting fuller spectrum light. So, you know, we really haven't found a downside with this light. It's I'm a little more. I'm not hearing one. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you the downside. Well, I'll wait a real second. We haven't, talked about, we, haven't, we haven't talked about <laughs> price yet, but you said they last about seven years. So well, you, amor just, you amorate the cost. That's just the half-life of the darn thing. Okay. That's so unreal. they will burn on beyond that. Um, but, you know, yes, it, it's a little more expensive um, up front, but... If you, fa if you were to take um, Florida where I live, it's 12 cents per kilowatt hour, and, and you take a 645 watt high intensity discharge like a high pressure sodium versus a 500 watt plasma, that's a 22% reduction in electricity, which would equate to $525 a year in electrical savings wow. every year. Wow, that's pretty year. good. Well, here in the desert- The light only a... costs 945 bucks, so do the math, less than two years, that doesn't factor in the fact that you have 22% less uh, heat loading, so your air conditioning system is working uh, 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 better and more efficiently. Yeah, that's what it's really all about here in Nevada, getting that air conditioning bill down. We have a hard enough time growing enough medicine during the off season as it is, and we really try to stretch it as far as we can. And if you're introducing a, uh, a system that can keep people's power bills reasonably, you could potentially you know, change a lot of people's whole growing cycle down here so well and right. this is what this is what really impressed me the most i've known ron for a long time i've known his meds and i've known him as a grower and he's a pretty darn good grower and when he gets excited about something and says that he switched his whole system over to something i'm kind of i'm almost kind of half sold just hearing him but then after i've heard all of this stuff this sounds great chris where can we get um where can we get these plasma uh chameleon grow lights from well um we only sell direct and we're factory direct and the reason we do oh, that there's is there's a savings uh, there too yep we have a huge passion for this industry uh to the point that what we do is we buy them by the thousands and and we pass that um quantity savings onto the one um, onesie twosies is what we kind of call them i hope that's not uh, offensive to anyone but the people that only buy a few lights at a time we pass the thousand light quantity discount right to them so dealers don't make a cut sorry guys no offense i'm not a dealer you can't pin that crap on me <laughs> <laughs> you know we, we we just like to to try to get it out in the industry so 945 bucks for a 500 watt plasma, our closest competition for a 300 water is 1145. Not sure what the issue is here, uh, uh, why people are struggling with this decision. Well, um, do you guys have a website and a Facebook that people can uh, connect with you at? Absolutely, chameleongrowsystems.com. Uh, if, you, if you just go there, or really, if you type in plasma grow lighting, you'll see that we dominate the first page in photos and in um, the organic search. But I got to go back to something that you said just a moment ago. Sure. And that is um, what, what, what makes this so special. Okay, so we talked about the power savings, the electrical heat loading savings, savings in electricity, all of that stuff. 
but and, and the length of lamp but um, how does that equate to medicine well if you give your body full full nutrition you will flourish right sure if you give your plant full nutrition we have proven two different states two different master growers two different labs five different strains identical uh, identical research was done here and we sent samples from high pressure sodium and plasma to two different labs in two different states both of them were precisely the same 10 to 13 percent more total assailable cannabinoids in the samples that were grown with plasma lighting so it smokes better it tastes better it's stronger uh, it costs you less money to run per year again uh, having difficulty understanding uh, uh, people's hesitation for uh, new technology well that's just it people hesitate when there's new technology until something's proven until they taste it and the proof is in the meds right yeah indeed indeed it is well uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the research you're doing growing medicine for the United States government with your uh, yeah systems indeed. oh that's interesting <laughs> So um, uh, University of Mississippi is the only uh, medical marijuana research station that is approved by the um, approved by NIDA, which is the National Institute for Drug Abuse. They're the only license in the U.S. to do that research, and that means they also have to get approval from the DEA. We've been growing medicine uh, there for for quite some time. Their professors are exceptional human beings and we're very pleased to be a part of that uh, research station so out of all of the potential vendors out of all the growth systems available they chose you well you know they have a variety of lights there um, um, so they're they're very cautious you know they have a proven technology that does a, a, a proven output so they have a lot of different lights there that they uh, continue to test I've been there and um, it, it's a great facility, I, I got to tell you. That's pretty cool. I mean, I've that, been in the, yeah. uh, I've been an advocate and in the industry for a long time, and I can't say that I've never known anyone that's personally been in the in that in that holiest of holies, I guess they'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's really interesting about that? While I was there installing the lighting uh, some years back, uh, they have an extraction lab there, and I said, okay, before I leave, before I leave. Somebody's teaching me how to do this. Somebody's gonna dab so, me what? out. What? <laughs> that's that well. Now you don't. God. You get. You don't get to do the dab. Oh. <laughs> well, is that uh, distributed? There. Is that distributed to the patients? They still have that are alive on the program, or is that specifically for scientific research? Because that's news to me. I didn't know <laughs> that the government. Research. I didn't know that the government made wax. That's unreal. No, they don't make wax. They make a. They make a real heavy oil. So it's oh, done, RSO like. Uh, Mm, no, it's it's even heavier and goopier. It's it's not mm. a very attractive product uh, to look at. <laughs> it smells okay, but there's a lot of green particulate matter in it. Whereas now um, uh, extraction technology has come so far that you can get that kind of amber shatter where you can actually read a newspaper through it. This was anything but that. This was mm -hmm. commercial grade research uh, research oil, if you will. They taught me how to make that product. We almost bought uh, the equipment that it takes to do that, and then we actually got connected up with a, with a guy who's got a really terrific system out in Colorado. He's one of our master growers, and, and, and we have a much better product than, than they deliver. And let me tell you, when they deliver a gram of that product for research, it is a very expensive gram of, of whack. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I know. This is coming from the people who had, what, like $300 toilet seats and $600 hammers? It's the government. <laughs> uh, great, great folks, and I learned an awful lot from them, and uh, I, I and cherish they, the fact that I was there. Absolutely. So, it, so they had these installed like three years ago. Have you done any follow up with them about you know the the quality of the meds for, versus the other? Have you seen any of the studies maybe that are coming out of America here? Well, no, actually, um, they're they're quite busy. Um, they just got a, a giant contract from the government to do a Charlotte's Web grow. A high CBD grow so to get any research out of them has been uh, has been exceptionally difficult but you know I, I just want to revel in the fact that you have you it. ever met or talked to anyone that has ever even been there much no. less has their product 
there, much less has been trained by their professors to make extracts. So I, I, I'm going to cherish that for a while. You should. I've got goosebumps, man. <laughs> uh, you know, if I would, if I, if I had had that chance, I'd have been like, yeah, come on, damn meow. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know that's one thing that you can't, you can't actually even. It's like being at the airport. You don't want to joke about anything because like you, know, you might terrorist. wear out your welcome, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. All right, well, we're, we're ready to take our second break here. Chris, you're welcome to stay with us after the break and can continue on. And uh, we also have Raymond has rejoined us in the studio. And we'll have nice more from the nation. Us, we'll be yeah. back in just a bit. Welcome, Raymond. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Nevada Cannabis News. Joining us in the studio is Ronnie's local patient, Kurt Dukoc, Perry Haichu, and Raymond is back in the building. Raymond, we're glad to see you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, um, out of Washington, have you heard that they had a pot auction in Washington? I did hear that. Yep. They, it brought in about six hundred thousand dollars, and they sold about three hundred pounds. That's about four dollars and forty six cents a gram. So that's actually pretty good for a gram, huh? I think it's an interesting concept for sure. The reason that uh, th this Fireweed Farms of Prosser sold about three hundred pounds of pot in to state licensed processors and retailers on Saturday, the Tri City Herald reported. Um, bidding took place under a black tent. The um, there were representatives to the Washington Liquor Control Board, and bidders could smell the plastic bags of buds before offering their bids in. And um, so, the reason that Fireweeds Farms sold their marijuana in a um, a pot auction is that they said they wanted to get rid of it all quick. Okay. <laughs> I know. Are they going out of business or anything? No, he or? wanted to spend more time with his grandson instead of packaging weed. Oh, well, that's very noble. Isn't it? <laughs> I know. He said he harvested and dried everything, and it was priced by the gram, and he auctioned it by strain and in lots uh, from about uh, half a pound to five pound uh, packets. I'm sure it had nothing to do with uh, being a pioneer of cannabis auctioning and getting press also well you know but the thing is that he said that he's also planning to donate fourteen thousand dollars to local schools nice. so wow. nice. give back man give back right on pay it forward well wow. also in washington a seattle sets medical marijuana symposium for november 20th seattle mayor ed murray announced plans for a symposium to study regulation and licensing issues that govern the city's more than 300 medical marijuana businesses. The number one agenda item will be licensing requirements for medical marijuana business in the city. The city informed business owners last month that they must be licensed per state law or they would be forced to close by the end of 2015. Well, at mm -hmm. least they're giving them a chance and not just going in all Walking jackbooted. in and closing the doors, right? 
Yeah, I mean, that's always that's always a um, possibility. And, you know, um, Chris, down there in Florida, um, you guys didn't have you guys didn't pass your uh, medical marijuana legalization. So do you guys grow in another state? <laughs> Uh, yes, we do. We have master growers in Colorado and California and a few other locations as well. Um, the, you know, there's an advocacy group down there called Canna Moms um, taking a, yeah. a, a, a Amendment 2 and they're regrouping to take the medical marijuana, white, uh, mar medical marijuana fight from uh, Tampa to the rest of the country. Um, so do you see a lot of press from these Canna Moms down there in Florida? We do actually. Uh, they're a great group here. It, it's been a real difficult struggle. I got to tell you, um, uh, I was too emotionally vested in this, and when it when when it did not pass, it it really tore us up. So, folks like like you're talking about are really out there, and myself really out there trying to get the word out. Like, what the heck is going on here? You know, the entire is passing legalization bills, and and we can't get medical marijuana. They just passed a Charlotte's Web law, so uh, there's some scuttlebutt on the street that perhaps they'll they'll add some legislation onto the existing uh, approved Charlotte's Web law and, and perhaps start sneaking it in. Well, you know what? What absolutely drives me nuts about uh, the Charlotte's Web strain and the fight and everything else is that um, many people say that there's you know that the lack of THC in the Charlotte's Web and that just the high CBDs are really good for seizures and really good for children because they don't get high, but you know and they don't have that euphoric feeling. But the the fact of the matter is is that if you don't heat the THC, it does not get you high. It's THC A, and, and until you heat it, that A molecule stays on there. Not only that, they seem to act like that is the only strain in the world that will help children. And that is frustrating to me. I think it's frustrating that they don't want people to feel good. They're well, like, why well, we're talking about people. kids, the Charlotte that's Web. A really, yeah. That's a really interesting point. When I was at the University of Mississippi, I asked the professors there, what's the magical combination of CBD and THC? And they said, you know, kind of a shotgun approach would be about a 50-50 mix, and you would kind of <laughs> cure what ails you. But... You know, for the children, sure, I get it. But there are benefits to uh, uh, both of uh, the major compounds. Well, the major compounds, you know, if, if the THC is not active and it's THCA, then it works in conjunction with CBD and to act synergistically within the body. Also, the higher the CBD count in the cannabis, the less high that you feel. Um, and, and I think that them taking the Charlotte's Web strain and, and just blowing it up is really a, does a disservice to the cannabis consumer um, rather than, rather than um, you know, a good platform. It just kind of also pushes this one strain that, you know. Well, there's more than just Charlotte's Web and high CBD strains out there. That's just the most commonly, that's like, you know. That's you know, the one being, that's kind of branded. Yeah, exactly. being first to market. You know, yeah, that's, that's the like the McDonald's of it or, you know. Right. Not so, to, yeah. That's an old pharmaceutical term, you know, be first to market. And it's just one of those things. They were the first ones out and they get the press. I got a question. I don't know um, if it's been addressed or not. Please forgive me if it has. Chris, what's the next step in Florida? Uh, next step in Florida is more legislation. Uh, the the buzz on the street is that it is not a popular topic for 2016 presidential, so that uh, uh, there needs to be some legislation um, pretty darn quickly, perhaps before or during the 2015 legislation, where we can get some uh, potentially some more traction. Now, in Florida, do you have uh, a sitting legislature or do you have or annuals or see like in Las Vegas, I mean, in Nevada, we have uh, every other year we have a legislative session. Yeah, part-time so, council. So mm -hmm. it's a part-time legislative session. What, what do you guys have there in Florida? Uh, we have a political mess. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer, sir. Good answer. No, you know, I got to tell you, I stay as far away from that as possible. But I do know that um, I believe that every year there's an opportunity for legislation, but every other year is, is the potential for vote. Well, how about doing a research project here in Nevada with our new reciprocity laws, potentially? Have you ever thought about uh, hooking up with some of our people here in the Silver State? You know, uh, we'd, we'd be pleased to do that. We actually have... Um, a dozen lights here of different varieties that we're testing on what we can grow here in Florida. Our hort scientist and I are, 
are doing some science. So if I could find the right application to uh, relocate, you know, a half a dozen chameleon lights and a half a dozen other industry uh, leaders for the right type of science and output, uh, sure, I'd be flying uh, flying out there to meet them in a heartbeat. Well, I'm I was right going to say. Well, I was going to say we. Um, my uh, 501c3 group has does have a 170a federal designation for research. So let's talk. Yeah. Are are there? Uh, you know, do they have uh, PhDs in, involved? We we need to make this. Uh, if we're going to do it, it's a big expense for everyone. I need to make it. Call, uh, call us after split. the show. Call us after the show, and right. we'll talk. Definitely, we'll talk okay. after the show. I do have I do have some uh, doctors out here that would be interested. Very good. Let's talk for sure. Absolutely. All right. Thank so you, so you much heard it everything. on Weekend Radio. We're, and we're, you heard it first. And you heard no it doubt. first. Exactly. Exactly. So thank you for coming on and speaking to us about your product. And um, we'll throw you guys up on our um, Facebook and, and our website. Uh, well, we, we already posted that they were coming on to the show to talk about lighting. And your Facebook has jumped over 500 likes just this afternoon alone. <laughs> oh, very nice. Is there, an, is there a recorded version of this that I can push out to the folks that didn't have a chance to hear it live? It'll be posted online. Yeah, we post right all on. of them, uh, all of our uh, radio shows on our YouTube channel, which is uh, Weekend702. Um, we also post them to our Facebook, and uh, if uh, we can also email you a copy of the file. That'd be great. If you just send me the address, I'll push it out in my social media and all my other connections, newsletter, et cetera, and we'll get another couple thousand uh, uh, listens. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Chris. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So I got a little story coming out of uh, Oregon here. All right. What's up, Kurt? Uh, there's an election. You know, we all just had the election up there in Oregon, and they just passed their legalization. Woohoo! Okay, so, yeah. Woo so uh, that election leading to judge delaying sentencing in an Oregon case. Really? So, yes. Now, this guy's name is kind of funny. Bonolith Bong Boyaseko. <laughs> so we'll just call him Bong. <laughs> <laughs> he, he appeared in a Portland courtroom expecting to be sentenced for smuggling marijuana. He had been convicted and now he was uh, he was there to hear his fate. And the judge entered uh, when the judge entered and things began to change. U.S. District Court Judge Michael Monsum delayed Bong's sentencing on November 6th to weigh the effect of Oregon's legalization marijuana for adult use mm -hmm. two days earlier. It, what you're he didn't have he, to do that. That was nice. I mean, he's not bound by the law to look at that retroactively, is he? No, he's not. Not at all. So uh, so they pointed out a change in policy after legalization passed, and he said, I would be reluctant to sentence someone today. Oh, wow. Right on. That guy deserves to be reelected for sure. Exactly. Well, our UN folks aren't as friendly. The United Nations. The United huh? Nations say? says medical marijuana is legal. Illegal. Yep, it does break the treaty. The UN, the United Nations Anti Narcotics Division said legalization in four U.S. state and countries and the country's capital violates international anti drug treaties. Residents of Oregon, Alaska, and Washington, D.C. joined Colorado and Washington State. Uh, passed this past election in ending the failed prohibition of cannabis, replacing it with tax and regulate scheme for people over 21. Reuters reports Yui Fedetiv, executive director of the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, said, I don't see how the new laws can be compatible with existing conventions well you know what we've been wondering that for a long time the the federal government had been giving cannabis to patients those 14 patients for years years oh, years he's a the guy who was talking about that is from the russian federation and we're kind of button heads right now so i wouldn't give that too much uh you know take that with a grain of salt for sure well poo poo on you yuri or whatever the hell your name was <laughs> yeah exactly that's right well, all right what's going on this week jen What's going on this week? You Tick know what? Uh, Tick Siegerblum's um, going Thursday to be speaking night. at the Jewish Federation um, and the impact on businesses on Thursday night. You can check our Facebook for the invite and check get signed up there. Check our website also. Um, he's also going to be having a dinner at his house, and uh, that is for sponsors and um, people that are giving to his campaign. Um, patients First in Pahrump. Patients First in Pahrump. 
and we have swag. What else, Perry? Oh, I think that's about it. This has been a great show, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank All you right. again. Be safe, everybody. Thanks for listening.